Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Trying to get this draft back up. I don't know where it went. Oh, God. Return to game. There we go. Okay. Dak Faden. Not as good in the non-powered cube. Primeval Titan. Just as good in the non-powered cube. I'm going to take this Primeval Titan. I don't think it's close. You guys think it's close? I don't think it's close. Mystic Confluence? Foil Mystic Confluence, no less. That's fascinating. Okay. You know what? I'll take it. <laughs> if you see the new Garrick, should you take him? Is he good? That's a good question. I'm glad you've asked. Acidic Slime and Beanie Boy. Marari's Wake, also interesting. Hmm. We can stick with these two colors. Let's go, let's take Acidic Slime. I think Acidic Slime is one of the most, uh, oh, fudge. Fudgy budgy. Well, now you're just, too, now you're just talking my language here. I think it's Charlotte's Agent, guys. I don't want to be three colors. I want to be two colors. Did you read my stip email and do you think it's reasonable? Maybe. I did read it. Okay, so let me know what you guys think. Cabalan sent me an email. Uh, it's a Frank Lepore stipulation. You must choose a card with a name that has your with a name that has the letter of your name in running order, starting with the letter F, then R onward. I think it would be hard, right? Because right now we do F R A. I'd have to pick a card with the name N. And there's none, right? Um, so I'm going to take Charlotte's Agent. Now we'd have to do K. Right, but the, the problem is, like, you're not drafting a deck. You don't get many choices. Um, I like stipulations that tend to have choices. Because I don't want to have an unplayable deck. This would be K, right? So, no Ks either. And if we skipped K for, like, if you have to keep doing N until you get it, like, it's like, okay, no N either, right? I think it's a lot harder. Not not harder, but I think it's more it's more limiting uh, than you'd like. I'm 100% taking Consecrated Sphinx. So the, I find the best stipulations are ones that like give you restrictions, but you have choices within those restrictions, right? And like a lot of times, I feel like if you're doing a stipulation where you're just taking the first letter, um, you have you're not gonna have a choice. There's gonna be one card to take, so you're basically just kind of it's kind of like auto picking. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times in sips, you want to make the best out of a bad situation. And I think if you're only taking cards with your name, um, you're not really getting you're not you're not having a choice, right? You can't be like, oh, I should have taken this instead, because you like you're, a lot of times it's nice to be like, oh, what if this wheels? Like, there's two things here, and one of them might come back, so you take like the the you know the one that's less likely to come back, and then you hope that the the one of the two cards that you could possibly take comes back, but. I, I'll, I will say that I, I loved the uh, the detail you put in here. <clears throat> but see, you even say if uh, if you're on letter R, you may take Riffling Cloudscape, but you may not take Misty Rainforest. But I think like even opening it up like that, where like you have to take uh, a card with the letter. So if I was like an F here, right? Um, still nothing. Like none of these cards have any Fs. R. So I could take, if we were doing R, I'd be able to take Lava Claw Reaches, but that's it. And otherwise I wouldn't just be able to take anything. I feel like it's either like you're taking cards in your name for like every once in a while, or you're not taking any cards at all. Or you're taking whatever you want for most of the draft. I think it's I think it's Incubation Druid. I love Fallen Shinobi a lot. Oh, Fallen Shinobi does have an F. Ha, huh, that's funny. I was actually looking at the second letter to see if that would be more open, so that's why I, that's why I missed it. But, um, oh, Ulamog. Are we just taking this Ulamog? Image is great. I kind of like Ulamog here. We already have Primeval Titan. I'm going to take Ulamog. Horler Rogue. This sets us up nicely if we do hit an opposition. I'm going to take Whirler Rogue. It's also the only card in our color, which is fine. Take Stratus Dancer. Eh, ancient, ancient, ancient Grudge is fine if we hit like a Stomping ground or something. Come on, just let you know. I do. I really appreciated the the effort you put in, and uh, I'm I'm glad we were able to like 
discuss the the merits, the pros and cons. Ship and fire, I guess. Okay, now we just have nothing. Um, this dude's good. Now your name is Pmax LW. Yeah, that's true. You just change. Alt alternatively, I can just take whatever cards I want. But the stipulation is that I have to change my name to those cards when the draft is done, which is also interesting. So. I think that might be more than a normal stipulation cost, though. Emrakul. Yikes. Sower, Devoted Druid. So the thing is, we're not going to be able to cast this Emrakul. I have an idea for a stip that I haven't sent in yet. I don't know if it would work, but for the Legacy queue, I was thinking... Legs I see, where you have to take cards where you can see legs in the art. I like that because, like, even in this pack, there's a lot of options. Like this, 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 and then like it gets in good conversations. It gets it's good talking points where you're like, does are these fucking legs? Are two tentacles count as legs? You know, like that's good. That's actually pretty funny. Tentacles count as legs. Yes. I, I mean, I'm thinking about taking this. It's either that or Devoted Druid. <sighs> Underground Sea, though. I'm taking the Emerald Emerald because, like, it's just so it's such a once once in a once in a draft card, you know. Like this card does things that other. If we draw like a if you get like a sneak attack, like I might just play it, find a way to do it. I'm taking Wood Elves here. I don't see anything else. Cold Steel Heart's fine, but. I do want to have some ramp for this ramp deck that we're potentially building. Hinterland Harbor is nice. Great Henge is good. I don't want to remove Soul because we are steering towards Charlotte Sage and hitting, hitting rampy boys. Uh, I think I'd rather just have the Fixing Land, to be honest. Henge is cute and all, but we don't have big creatures. So, like, we're going to have a 2-2, two -two, and then we're still going to have to play pay 7 mana for this. And I, don't, I just don't think that's great. I think Henge is really strong. <clears throat> Might even come back. One of these might come back. <clears throat> right, but we're not going to play Ulamog and then play Henge after Ulamog. Like, we're just going to win the game with Ulamog. If we have one of these in play to reduce the cost of Great Henge, we're already winning. <coughs> then I'm not really concerned about the cost of Great Henge. Henge for five is still great, but it's not going to cost five. It's going to cost a million. If we have a 2-2 in play, it still costs 7, not 5. <clears throat> uh, I actually think I just want Compulsive here. Inquest! Oh, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, no, it's not CMC, it's power. It's the greatest power among creatures. If it was CMC, that'd be great, because you can go, like, Charlotte's Agent for 3, and then play it for 6. Yeah, it's still pretty rough. But, like, once you hit 4 or 5, it'd be great. But, yeah, it's always... Because we have a bunch of 2-2s. 2-2, two, 2-2, two, 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 one, one, two, two, 0 So we'd have to have like a 6, an 11, or a, ten, a 15, or a 10 dropout in order to actually see a, a reasonable return on our... Okay. Alright, that's it. That's it. I'm done. Are you happy now? I'm going to take Farseek. Because now it actually gets a Bayou, which is great. <clears throat> oh, Liliana Dreadhorde General? That's pretty sweet in our Sultai deck. God, we passed that Underground Sea too. God dang it. Could take Duplicant. I actually think Duplicant's good. Yeah, let's just take Duplicant. Ooh. Swaggy Bay. Gonna crawl out through the fallout with me. <clears throat> I think it's Thrag Tusk. <clears throat> or is it is it Gary? It's Thrag Tusk. Let's take the Thrag Tusk. Let's take Shieldred. 
Oh, wow. Birthing Pod came back. I don't know for a Birthing Pod deck, but you know what? Stranger shit has happened. Wow, Henge came back. See, this is why I didn't take Henge. It's not a high pick. Blooming Marsh could be nice. We have no incentive to be to be black right now, though. Eh, Kira's a, Kira's a card. <clears throat> Why don't you crawl out through the fauna? Okay. I think our deck looks good so far. Ooh, Jean. <clears throat> oh, the good Nissa. Okay. Is the good Nissa better than the Nugan? I probably. I think so. Good Nissa helps us cast these things. So, I mean, like, we have a four drop to hit, we have a five drop to hit, we have six drops to hit. Um, I think we want more four drops, but otherwise, like, Shardless, Wood Elves, and Champion are all good things to hit with our, with our Birthing Pod. Rexage also is pretty sick in the main deck. Nissa gives you the Titans? What does that even mean? I'm going to take Rexage. Having Rexage in the main deck is just so good in this format. As you can tell if you watched our previous draft, be sure to slam those like and subscribe buttons. Why I said that now? I don't know. Because you need to know. You need to know. And now you know. <coughs> no all out of love. Deranged Tournament, not bad with uh, Birthing Pod. You could sack Deranged Tournament to go get a Titan. I'm going to slam robsmom.co. You guys should definitely check out robsmom.co. What I learned over there was it sank because they didn't have nearly enough weight in the center. And it was it literally had been on the water for 10 minutes and it sank. It they should have got, got your mom. She's got enough weight in the Jesus center. Jesus Christ. But what I, it's funny. That's good shit. Quality content. I'll take the deranged tournament, I guess. I don't think we're playing Jace. Nissa's is good. Oh, Wooded Foothills does not get anything for us yet. I like Nissa. I like Nissa. Cryptic Command. Oh, fudge. Arcane Artisan actually seems great as another way to do these jobbies. I like an Arbor Elf, but I think we just have to might take the Ar Arcane Artisan. I don't know what our deck is doing. <laughs> That's like the... Our sideboard is pretty rough. <clears throat> We can take the Elf and hope the Artisan comes back. I'm going to take the Elf and hope the Artisan comes back. Avenger of Zendikar. Show and tell with Emrakul. I don't know, dude. Enchantment, land, artifact, or creature. Mike was talking about taking show and tell the other day. We also have Through the Breach. I don't think we need Avenger of Zendikar. I think our top end is pretty well sorted out right now. I'm just going to take show and tell. Take an ooze for the sideboard. I'm hoping the Arcane Artisan comes back. Man, if only we were black. We're getting all the... Thrashing Brontodon is fine. Wow, absolutely nothing. <clears throat>
Okay. What if we go turn two Lightning Greaves? Oh, I'm gonna take the Lightning Greaves. What if you go turn two Lightning Greaves into turn three Show and Tell Emrakul equipped with Lightning Greaves? What happens then? And the Arcane Artisan came back. Is and through the breach? Huh. We only have Raging Ravine for red, right? <laughs> for the legs I see stiff. That's hilarious. Uh, I was just going to type in legs I see here, but I think that might look weird if PayPal were to look into it. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I'm a fan. That is awesome, my dude. <laughs> okay, we have to do a legs I see stiff. Hold on, let me... Uh... Close this, open this guy, move you, put you back up. Okay, legs I see. Must be able to see legs in card art. Nice. That's gas, dude. Might have to fund the no legs stip in response. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We have to make one cut here. It might be Birthing Pod. We only have one. And we, like, yeah, we're just not a Birthing Pod deck. We have one two drop and one four drop, which means our threes can't go into fives if we draw this. And our, our we have one two to go into any of these threes. I almost don't mind playing the Bayou just because it's there's no consequence really. And it, we can get it with Farseek, so. It just lets us get either land with Farseek. I almost don't give a shit about Great Henge. I almost rather play, like, the Deranged Hermit over the Great Henge. Oh, <clears throat> uh, there are no legs in, in here. This is just clothing. It's like saying it's clothing legs, right? It's like if there were shoes in there, like your shoes legs? No, I don't think so. It's like the age old is a hot dog sandwich. Okay. I'm tempted to find a spot for Deranged Hermit. I don't think it's better than any of these other cards though. I just don't think Great Henge is where we want to be. 8-7? Don't turn around. Ooh, I'm okay with that. This is 8. This is 8-10. <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. This deck's weird. I, I You know what? Here's the thing. Um, I don't think we're going to win many games. I don't know if our deck feels like it's missing something. And also, I would not be surprised if our opponent was able to get them with the show and tell. If we can just go Lightning Greaves, show and tell, Emrakul, kill them. That seems like good times. Um, just to be clear, guys, we're not actually doing... This is not the Legs IC stipulation. That will be done at a future point. Yes. Oh, boy. You know what? Okay. I'll keep it. Did you and Mike see the lighthouse? Yes, I saw it. Mike did not see it. I saw it with Katie when I was in Baltimore. I thought it was brilliant, and I really want to see it again. Um, I feel like the theater didn't have the best sound system, so a lot of the dialogue was actually um, a little bit hard to hear for me, and I think the dialogue makes the movie. Like, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to ship... God, I guess Consecrated Sphinx, which feels bad. We have Mystic Confluence, so... Yeah, 
Yeah, don't spoil it for, for everything is terrible. It's definitely an experience. Like, the whole movie is just gorgeous. I, I haven't seen The Witch. I like watching movies with subtitles, and I don't think it makes me feel old. I just think I like the clarity of it. Like, there's a lot of times people have accents in movies, or, like, they just don't say things clearly, or their words run together, or they have obscure names. You know, there's tons of situations where, like, subtitles have helped me understand what someone was saying in a movie. And it's not because I'm, like, old. I'm just, like... <clears throat> Like, if someone's name was, like, Rabison, and I'm like, what the fuck's that dude's name? And it's, like, some obscure fantasy name, and I'm like, I have no idea how to pronounce it, how to spell it. But if it's just on the screen, then every time I hear that name or see that name, I'm like, oh, now I know what it is. Or if someone's, like, loud in the kitchen, I don't have to worry about, like, having to rewind it or having to pause it. I can just keep watching and then know, like, in a moment, this will be done. And I can go back to listening to the movie as well. <clears throat> yeah, I think subtitles are great. I, I usually, I, I have subtitles on by default for most things I watch. Yeah, there's definitely lines that Robert Pattinson and William Defoe say, Willem Defoe say that, like, they have this, like, so they have this, this old sailor, like, dialect, this accent. And there's things I'm like, what the fuck did he just say? And they're also using, like, old-timey maritime speech. Like, like from, you know, from centuries ago. You know, well, not centuries ago, like a century ago, right? Like, late 19th century, I guess, or early 20th, early, early 20th century. And so it's like, what did he just say? What is that word? Because I don't, it's not, I'm not familiar with the word. You know, so it's nice to see it written on the screen. Yeah, like, there's there's definitely times where, like, I have to lower my volume because an explosion happened, and then someone's talking, and I have to raise it 40 points, and I'm like, oh, good. So, when there's an explosion or any kind of action, it should be at 20, but when people are talking, I'll, I'll pump it up to 75, so that's totally reasonable. I still don't know why TVs and soundbars don't have a decent way to level sounds. Our opponent has, uh, has disconnected and rejoined, so that's what we're, that's what we're waiting on right now. It's always funny looking at, like, Facebook threads where Pattinson is mentioned, like, uh, because it's always, like, actual idiots being, like, the, the sparkly vampire guy, and you're just, like, you've literally seen nothing else he's done, have you? <clears throat> Pattinson is actually a legit phenomenal actor. Like, if you don't, if you don't think Pattinson can play serious legit roles definitely definitely look at the witch or not the witch uh the lighthouse rather <clears throat> oh that's true van wedge i agree with that completely the people criticizing him for twilight are people who haven't even seen twilight so yeah. You know. Do what you do. It doesn't hurt that he's easy on the eyes. Yeah, he's an attractive dude. That is an attractive gentleman. Why don't you holla, crawl up through the phone up next to me? Oh yeah, I never hated Leonardo DiCaprio. I think it's easy to dislike. Like it's like writing off Robert Pattinson as the Twilight guy is like writing off Leonardo DiCaprio as being the Titanic guy. Both are like extremely comical things to do that make no sense whatsoever. And they just make you look stupid in the long term. But also to be fair, uh people that are overly negative or hateful towards things, I like making those kind of people look stupid. Because I think hating things is just inherently stupid. So just don't be stupid, I guess. And then you're good.
Are you going to counter my Wood Elves? No? Okay. Man, I wish I could. I wish I had a tropical island or a breeding pool here. That's all I want. Second blue would be just chef's kiss. I also hate Nazis. Fair point. I don't think hating things counts when you're hating things that are uh, that are are only they only exist for hatred, right? Like, just don't be stupid, and then you're good. That's it. That's the that's yeah. That's my autobiography. And boy, does it apply to me at some points. Yeah, put on this guy. What the hell? Like, if I had to give young Frank advice from old Frank, I'd just be like, hey, just don't be stupid and you're good. God, I hope he listens. He was real stupid. Why don't you crawl out through the primeval titan with me? Wow, that's fucking incredible. <laughs> Days. Wow. Wow. Oh man, Stevie Nicks is incredible, dude. Every time I hear, every time uh, a Fleetwood Mac song comes on. Fuck, I just lose my shit. I'm like, this is incredible, dude. Really? Bayou? You can't be a second island, you piece of shit? Oh, lord. Oh, the I hate this movie versus this isn't for me is, is an insane distinction that I, uh, I... Oh, god. People confuse, like, this is bad with I don't like this all the time. And it drives me insane. Sure. No. Wow, that daze was un unreal. Hmm. Yep, cool. Another another forest from holding Mystic Confluence. That's that's pretty cool. I'm sure this is gonna end well. Weird decision. Sure, you counter my image. <clears throat> Can I get this on here? The answer is no. I'm just gonna niv miss it. Okay. Oh, then you're gonna then you're gonna kill it, and then you're gonna draw a card. That's cool. We're having a good time. You got six cards in your hand. Gonna concede if... What? No, oh, that's...
Whiskers on raindrops and raindrops on whiskies. Do 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 do. Hunter's dreaming. He's having a good time chasing squirrels. I don't see how, uh, Van Wedge, you don't see how what? They lightning bolted one of the tokens? Or they lightning bolted our face? I don't like this does not equal this is objectively not good. It is incredibly self- I agree with you. Saying if you personally don't like something that it is objectively not good is just false. It's just a fictitious statement. Like the the I, th I would say the the correct I mean the correct way to phrase it is like I don't like this but I accept that it's not terrible cinema right like okay well I'm gonna bring in Kira against this monstrous deck. Turn to champion, which seems good. Turn to wood elves seems fine as well. Well, oh wow, Hinterland Harbor is nice. Champion of Wits or Wood Elves? Okay, I think we're just getting rid of these two. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, feels like we're living the dream here. One, two, three, four, five, six mana here. All right. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven mana next turn. We're really close to Ulmog, surprisingly. Discarding Torrential Girl and Glenelendra is really, like, pretty, pretty fascinating. Why do I feel like there's a Pestermite slash Deceiver Exarch? coming to visit us before they okay uh, I guess we'll pass
<laughs> the target creature can't be blocked ability right now is awkward because it, it shuts down one of the shields from Kira, so... You don't want to be like, oh, I'll make this guy unblockable, and then they're like, alright, I'll just kill it. Oh, dang. No attack with looter. Tamiyo tap down Hinterland Harbor, I would imagine. Tamiyo just draw four. That's pretty good. Now I have to discard two? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven mana. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty okay, I think. How much damage do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, everyone's attack with you, and then you can kill the ten. Okay, we just win the game. <laughs> Alright, well, that was interesting. <sighs> Alright, well. 1-1. One, one. Oh, if we had open opposition, I was thinking that same thing. I'm like, last game, the game one, rather, I was like, if this deck had opposition, I'd be okay with it. Standard beat who is winning bits. I think it's me. I'll keep this hand because we're on the draw and any land in two turns means we can do things. What are we gonna are we gonna hit it? No, we're gonna draw an Emrakul though. But this is a thing. Absolutely amazing. Just fucking incredible. Just exactly what you want. Yep, and uh, so we can go to the next match, I guess. Sometimes you just... Okay, well... <laughs> yeah, man, be sure to tap my one land down. You never want me to... That's good. Real, just, just great. I mean, could have mulliganed. I, I, you know, it's it's our own fault. Do I wish Magic had a resource system that didn't let you play games? Of course I do. Do they have that? No. Why not shovel Emmy back in? Because we literally have Arcane Artisan in our hand, which wins the game with Emrakul. I mean, you know, puts a copy of Emrakul into play at the end of their turn, and then we get to attack with it. Come on, Tim, get it together. Because we literally have two-card combo in hand with Emrakul. You know what? I'll try it. I'll give this a go. Oh, you didn't see that, did you, Timothy? Well, well, well. How the turntables have... I was stupid. I didn't want to say anything, but... Allow myself to introduce myself. I'm Richie Cunningham, and this is my wife, Oprah. I don't actually feel like we need to play this. Like, next time we just go this guy into this guy I think we're actually okay without playing the compulsive and just discarding a card like we have a great curve sir you have one land I suggest you mulligan I also like to live dangerously oh so they have a Tarka tooth coming up so boy they're really hurting hurting on the land sitch, the land sitch here All right, now they got a forest. Jesus, a Ulamog after that? Good lord. Sure. You got it. 
you know what? You got it. Pew, pew, pew. Now we just keep up this sweet, sweet ass uh, mystic confluence. Draw. Are you going to hit a land? I'm actually just going to bounce these two and draw a card. Because now they have to replay one or the other, and they're we know they're not drawing a land because the forest is on top. Oh, they can just replay this guy. But that still doesn't let them play. Sure, Whisperwood. Okay. Well, they only have one red, so if they play Sneak Attack, I don't really think it's that funny. Plus, I have plenty of things to sacrifice. Um, hmm. Consecrated Sphinx? I think we just want the. I think we just want the mana. <laughs> like. Yes. Let's get. Forest, forest. Oh, next turn being able to tap two uh, Thopters to give the Primeval Titan unblockable. Oh, library, okay. So now all they can play is literally Whisperwood or Beast Whisperer, which is fine. Gar Gary? Yep, you're killing that. Okay. Alrighty then. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. Nissa who shakes the world. And that's the end. Okay, so let's see what we could have done. We could have went play island. Um, yeah, we couldn't do both. What do we see? A Tarka, Tooth and Nail, Ulamog, Whisper. Like, do we not have any other counters, right? Stratus is good against Tooth and Nail, but that's pretty much it. Brontodon is good against library god show and tell seems like sh like trash against their ulamog slash atarka like don't, don't one thing to consider is that when you show and tell they get the first attack uh we didn't need extra green then we need a double bubble blue which is the problem you have to keep two untapped blue sources one which would have been the island and one would have been the hinterland harbor Otherwise, we only have one blue source, so Consecrated Sphinx isn't coming down. Yeah, I think we want Bronson on over show and tell. This is just a sorcery, right? Yeah, okay. Um, Who can turn the world on with a smile? Like, we still have Arcane Artisan. Um, and... Jesus. <laughs> While I love this hand, I'm going to say no. Okay. Ulamog Artisan seems great here. I will keep... Put Whirler Rogue back. Oh, boy. I mean, if they bolt it, like, it's still a one-for-one. One. We get to cycle a card. Okay, so they're drawing a forest. One, one two, three. All right, what's on top of the top? Tree speaker. Okay. 
Who can turn the world on with her smile? God, fuck. Come on, dude. That's some bullshit. Wow, so close. I don't even want to play Nissa because then they just kill it with Garrick, but I guess, like, it's arguably better than having them pump out two two wolves for the next 50 turns. So I guess we'll just accept the card draw. Yep. Cool. Now we have a hand, one shitlord and four lands in our hand. Beautiful. Not even gonna play this out. Like this is actual bullshit. Charles hits. Greaves. Let me draw hermit. Like it's just not. Kind of dumb. I almost don't hate Kira. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What are our ways to get Emrakul into play? We took out Show and Tell. Arcane Artisan is pretty much it. Is that good enough? Yeah, this hand seems good. Alright, so we can go Nissa. Alright. Next turn, Whirl a Rogue, and then the sky is the limit. Okay. Jesus. Yeah, we're just going to attack here. There's no way they block. And if you do, I will 100% take that trade. For sure. Whisper wood. Come at me, bro. Just a two two, huh? Deal. Wow, you don't flip that? Oh, I guess it doesn't hurt as well. <laughs> Let's make sense. I was like, why don't you flip that? Nope, that doesn't work that way. Oh, I don't like that, because then if they sacrifice it in response, we don't get to draw any cards. So it's almost better to, to 
to bounce this thing. But then they just draw a card. Then it's just drawing a free card. I think we just draw three. I do like a Consecrated Sphinx. I was going to say Mystic Snake. It is not a Mystic Snake. Arcane Artisan. Sure. Forest on top. Free forest. Crater fucking hoof. Oh, Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight if they hit any land, that's gonna do it. Okay, so I guess we're dead. <sighs> Love it. Love it. Yep, nothing we can do. Oh, they manifested the crater hoof. Oh, wow, never mind. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's not that great, I guess, because this guy's also a problematic dick face, but. I think we actually just play Incubation Druid here. Put Greaves on this thing. Wow, the hoof being like. That's great. All right, well, they get to cast. I don't think they even cast the log this turn, actually. They okay, have one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I think they only have nine. Forest on top, sure. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's not great, but they have crater hoof here so maybe we still survive deranged hermit and blood braid elf and they put in ulamog and dragon lord atarka sure that's fine not great but it is what it is Yeah, it's really annoying. Yep, that's not impressive at all. All right. Um Three, four, five, six. Yep. <laughs> same exact card. It's the same card. Arcane Artisan. Do, 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 do.
How do we survive, you may ask? Well, dear readers, we don't. We go oh fucking to. Yep, keep on drawing. Thank you! Yeah, I think that's why you just take tooth and nail, because, like, you know, sometimes you uh, have to draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 of your 17 lands. And 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of your 23 spells. Um, one star piece, five star games. Thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Choose a player. I'll choose myself. Ch -ch choose myself. Deranged Hermit. Give me all the squirrels in the world. Annihilator Quattro. One, two, three, four. Both at me, huh? I guess we'll block here. No trample? Okay. Good deal. That was a pretty unexciting attack. I mean, if we can hit uh, an Ulamog, we might actually win the game. That is not an Ulamog. Oh! Oh! Oh, Jesus! Like you do. Oh my god. Exile a card from your hand. Ula Muggles. Oh boy. Whew. Ooh, we had to find an Ulamog. We did. Wow. I mean, we had a bunch of cards to draw, right? We had the Arcane Artisan draw. We had the Nissa draw. We had the draw for our turn. That was pretty That was pretty impressive, nonetheless. I was, I was upset. I was getting irritated. Because I uh, felt like we were behind the, the marshmallow the whole time. What the hell does that mean? I kept this hand. I think it's fine. Yeah, if they didn't, if they didn't morph the, I would have actually, if the hoof was on top of my library, I would have just literally sacrificed the Whisper Royal Monster right then and there. Oh shit! Oh biscuits!
Man, that would have been great because uh, we could go Wood Elves into Farseek in the same turn. Legion War Boss, huh? Yeah, I'll take one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Walking Burlista. Oh, come on. Really? Where are my blue sources at? And that's how you die. Okay. Well. Sword of Steel and Sinew seems good. Scavenging you seems okay. Kira seems good. Brontodon seems good. Take out Rex Sage. Uh, I think Show and Tell is going to be decent Thank here. You. I think we're always going to have something bigger. Actually, I might just take out this whole package. Scooty Love, welcome back, my dude. Welcome back. Really appreciate it. <sighs> Seems so good, though. Take out one forest for another island. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I like nine, nine. Show and tell is a trap. I actually discussed this earlier. <laughs> what up, Dimitri? I'm going to keep this hand... We can still cast Champion of Wits. Do I hear you need more uh, eyelids? Okay. Love the ambiance of the traffic. Yeah, I have my window open for the first time ever. Come on, forest. Kira, great glass spinner. So now, unfortunately, we have nothing to play on this turn. So. Come on, forest. That counts. Ooh, old 
Good steamy McKinnerson, huh? Let's get rid of Farseek here. I don't think we're going to be playing that. And probably... Sword, I guess. No, I don't fucking have two red. Why are you asking me if I want to do that? You know I don't have it. Just... Yeah, this, they're, they're like, we're not going to play the pro red sword. Equip this, like, we're gonna winner, like we're never going to have a turn to play a creature. Next turn, play the sword. Next turn, equip the sword. Like, it's just never going to happen. Three, four, five. I mean, we're basically just dead here, so... Sad we have to eat our own valuable champion of wits, but what can you do? I mean, we have to have another land to play Thrag Tusk, so. I don't hold out faith that the top of my deck has a land on it, but. Yep, never don't have anything. Uh, go to five block here, one, two, three, four, six. Cool. I had a fun time. Thank you guys for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Apparently I'm actual hot fucking trash at this cube so far. We have gone two one two one one two one two one two. Those are my records so far. Um I don't know, I guess we're just in our in our learning curve growing growing pains stages but uh either way thank you guys for watching hopefully you'll uh stick with it as we get through these because cube is still a super fun format but uh hopefully things look up thank you for watching slam those like and subscribe buttons patreon.com slash frank for one or two dollars a month is a great way to support the channel you can also head out to uh, coolstuffinc.com use promo code frank5 to get five percent off manatraders.com is also a great subscription service the link and the promo code in the description below will get you 20 percent off and uh, i'll see you guys next time